Uh, of course, good afternoon. Uh, we have uh, guests from uh, different time zones, and uh, uh, we have also very delighted to have uh, Professor Z, uh, Mr. Flavio uh, Roshena, if I pronounce it right, and uh, uh, delighted to see all the guests. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attendance and support uh, for the first Sino Dutch Sports Tech webinar about uh, uh, you know our, our first webinar is about uh, uh, sports and the health tech. So I'm Ray. Uh, many people will, you already know me. I'm Ray from Accra Blue International Sports uh, Technology Group. Uh, you can call us ABSG. Uh, so this event is uh, organized by Sino Dutch uh, Sports Tech Hub, uh, which was created by uh, ABSG and our core partner Orange Sports Forum. Uh, today, we may have uh, a few agenda to go over. Uh, during the whole uh, event, uh, you can, oh, sorry. Uh, so during the whole event, uh, if you have any questions, you can put your questions in the chat box. Uh, we will try to answer uh, all the questions uh, during the Q&A session. Um, before the very uh, anticipated presentations from Professor uh, Z and Mr. Uh, Flavio, uh, please allow me to uh, give a very uh, uh, brief introduction uh, of us. Uh, so, um, as uh, of us, a a ABSG is a globalized uh, sports technology innovation uh, platform. Um, we are creating this uh, top notch uh, sports tech ecosystem and industrial group. So, um, so ABSG, um, it is a uh, it is a representative uh, uh, ecosystem uh, from uh, Greater China in the uh, global sports te technology industry uh, report for three consecutive years. Uh, our founder and CEO, Mr. Mike Yang, uh, is also selected as a global leading innovator in sports uh, industry. Um, at present, uh, ABSG has established partnerships with more than uh, as you can see, uh, with more than 40 uh, sports innovation platforms from 25 countries, uh, as well as many investment partners and uh, uh, various partners in, uh, from China. So uh, ABSG and uh, Hong Kong government wholly owned technology uh, innovation hub Cyberport also jointly uh, are creating this global sports, uh, sports technology cluster and uh, community. Uh, we will also uh, introduce Cyberport later. Um, ABSG is uh, also developing joint ventures. Uh, we call them major uh, innovation uh, projects, uh, joint ventures with different high value partners uh, in eight uh, major sectors, uh, as well as uh, uh, creating M&A fund consortium uh, with the global capital market. Uh, as you can see for our uh, this year and next year key missions, uh, we are also working on a uh, global summit uh, with uh, elite uh, sports uh, um, uh, innovators and uh, uh, leaders uh, from the world. Um, at in as introduced just now, IBSG, uh, as well as uh, Sino Dutch uh, Sports Tech Platform is working uh, very closely uh, with Cyberpower Hong Kong to create the uh, Sports Tech cluster and serve the uh, uh, Sports Tech uh, ecosystem. Uh, Cyberport is the digital uh, tech hub of Hong Kong, established by the uh, uh, the Hong Kong government. Uh, Cyberport has the world class uh, facilities and uh, infrastructures uh, provided to the uh, uh, the startups uh, from different sectors with uh, uh, with digital positioning. So by by October last year, uh, uh, there are already over nineteen hundred uh, technology companies in Cyberport community. Uh, both on-site and off-site. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, or, uh, uh, over uh, 2,000 in total by far. Uh, there are quite a few unicorns from Cyberport as well, uh, of which uh, uh, Nimbuka brands uh, might be familiar to us as uh, they are also very active in sports uh, in the uh, fan engagement area. Uh, in digital entertainment and esports uh, cluster, uh, there, are, there have been many uh, activities and uh, programs so far, uh, including the events and some specific schemes to facilitate uh, the growth. Um, the overall cumulative uh, funds raised is over uh, 35 uh, billion Hong Kong dollars. Uh, I think you know it will be obviously uh, much higher by the end of this year. 
um, by the breakdown of uh, now uh, local founders of on-site community uh, complaints, we can find that uh, the origins of the uh, startups in Cyberport is very international, uh, given the very unique positioning of Hong Kong, as uh, as you know, the uh, uh, International Finance Center, the Trade Center, as well as the Technology Innovation Center. So for uh, technology companies uh, from the world, uh, which has uh, or has the plan to uh, set up entity or business in Hong Kong, uh, Cyberport offer, uh, offers uh, uh, regular and uh, comprehensive uh, uh, support upon successful, successful uh, application, uh, you know, such as very attractive financial assistance and uh, uh, investment. So uh, you know, with all the supports, uh, startups can expand their business to bigger markets to, for example, the mainland China and uh, other countries. So the Cyberport programs uh, uh, are open for various times each year. Uh, we will keep you posted uh, for this uh, very great opportunities. And uh, please don't hesitate to contact us for more information if you are interested. Uh, thanks. Uh, so uh, next, uh, we will have uh, uh, Mr. Camille Smooters uh, from Orange Sports Forum to give us uh, a short speech. Now, thank you very much, uh, uh, Rui, for this uh, introduction. So, uh, thank you to all of uh, to all of you for joining this uh, this webinar, the first in in, in a row. A little bit to to, to the background of this uh, webinar and uh, and our cooperation with uh, with Aqua Bloom. Um, first of all, Orange Sports Forum uh, Foundation with three hundred companies uh, um, founded in two thousand ten. Main founders, uh, John, John van der Laar, also in this uh, in this call, in this webinar, and uh, and myself. We have, uh, but today we have about 300 uh, Dutch companies who are interested uh, to do business abroad, and we try to facilitate them uh, by our foundation. The talks with Aqua Bloom started like uh, three years ago, with Rui and and, and Mike. And uh, the beginning of uh, 2000, uh, beginning of this year, we uh, agreed on uh, setting up an uh, LTD together. So uh, per today, we have a 50-50 percent LTD in Hong Kong, which uh, should be uh, the, the gateway uh, from Europe uh, to Hong Kong and mainland uh, China. So very happy that we have also a good uh, uh, local person, uh, top guy on board, uh, he's not uh, in the meeting today in the call, uh, Rizal Wayono. He's actually also leading uh, Sincicup, uh, a big venture fund, uh, and doing also uh, for us uh, some activities uh, for our LTD. So that, that a little bit from, uh, from my uh, perspective. So thank you all for joining this. I think we have uh, an interesting webinar. Uh, two keynote speakers also, I think, with Mr. Professor Z and, uh, and Flavio from Philips. And Rick will also elaborate a little bit more on the structure later on of the LTD. So thank you, thank you for joining, and uh, yeah, we, let's stay in touch, in touch about possibilities to to cooperate in this uh, interesting perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Camille. Uh, so next, uh, we will have uh, Mr. Rick Seekers. Sorry for 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 wrong <laughs> pronunciation, uh, if any. Uh, from Orange Sports Forum Run to present Sino Dutch Sports Take Up. Uh, Rick, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, everyone. And um, I hope you can see my screen right now. Um, first of all, good morning, good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rick Slegers, working for Orange Sports Forum uh, since nine years uh, already. And um, I'm happy to tell you a little bit more about the Sino Dutch, Dutch Sports Tech Hub, which we uh, established. Um, well, it's a journey that started a couple of years ago when we visited uh, Chengdu with a Dutch, a big Dutch trade delegation, uh, all specialized in sports and mainly also in football uh, development, where we also met uh, Ray for the first time. And um, uh, yeah, we're happy that after all those years, it uh, resulted in this uh, Sino Dutch uh, Sports Tech Hub, uh, which does not only uh, support the Dutch companies, but also looks broader to a broader perspective. Uh, within Europe, so also support European uh, organizations in uh, sports and tech. Um, the official uh, launch took place in uh, in August. Um, but what we basically uh, do 
is we provide a platform for Dutch companies and European companies to enter the Chinese market and also the other way around. So for Chinese companies to go to the European market. And uh, thanks to this Sino-Dutch Sports Tech Hub, which is located in Cyberport uh, together uh, and established together with, with Aquabloom, uh, we can offer uh, uh, great support to, to companies, to uh, universities, to organizations, uh, not just for business development, but also for R&D projects. And um, well, there are many opportunities in terms of, of business, uh, funding, and knowledge exchange uh, between both, uh, both countries. So uh, we're very happy that we made this step so we can uh, even better facilitate the organizations uh, with their ambitions uh, between China and the Netherlands. Well, like I said, it was established in, uh, in August during the uh, DELF event in, uh, in Cyberport. Uh, DELF stands for Digital Entertainment Leadership Forum, uh, which takes place in Hong Kong uh, every year. And here on this picture, you see uh, Diesel Wayono, uh, one of the founding members of the Sino-Dutch Sports Tech Hub, uh, but also the Dutch Consul General based in Hong Kong, uh, the Dutch President of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, of the Dutch Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, and then Mr. Mike Young, CEO of, uh, of Aquabloom. Uh, and this was the first big step where we announced this Sino-Dutch Sports Tech Hub and presented it to a large uh, audience of, uh, of people and stakeholders in, uh, in sports. Uh, I think it all got a great follow-up during the uh, trade mission and a visit of the Dutch Minister of Sports, uh, Minister uh, Helder, who visited um, mainland China and Hong Kong in, uh, in October this year. Uh, we had a great uh, week, uh, full program, but also uh, had a lot of time to, um, uh, to visit the facilities at Cyberport, Sino Dutch Sports Tech Hub, as well as Aqua Bloom with some... Uh, Good, uh, good relations and friends were invited to the residence of the Consul General for a uh, business lunch together with the Minister. Uh, and this way we could present it to the right level, uh, to a ministerial level, to the government, to big companies. Uh, and it really was a yeah, head start for, uh, uh, for us. But a little bit more about uh, why uh, we all did it. Uh, like I said, the, the, the conversations already started a couple of years ago. Uh, we visited China a couple of times with a huge business delegation, and each time we were impressed and amazed by the uh, the growth and, and the facilities in China in the field of sports. Um, as you can see here in, the, in terms of, uh, of GDP, uh, well, in the, it took eight years to go from one to three, um, but for the next uh, 10 years, it will triple. It goes from uh, 5 trillion to 15 trillion uh, RMB. Uh, and I think it's all thanks to the uh, well, strong national growth uh, strategy uh, related to sports and also the policy that uh, the Chinese government uh, has on sports. So it's a very important uh, aspect. And um, uh, also thanks to the growing middle class, uh, there are huge opportunities uh, in, in China if it comes to, uh, to sports. And I think there's a lot that we in Europe can learn from, uh, from China and also the other way around. So um, yeah, intensifying this uh, relationship uh, can be very beneficial for uh, for everyone. Uh, I think uh, one of the key elements uh, and results of this uh, sports policy is also, of course, the organization of the Olympics uh, in Beijing uh, two times already. And uh, I'm sure that there will be many more uh, big sport events uh, in the future. Uh, now, everyone can imagine that China is a huge country, huge market, a lot of people. Uh, but what about the Netherlands? Um, we're, of course, quite small. I think we are number 65 in terms of inhabitants worldwide. We are even 133 in terms of uh, size of the country uh, worldwide. But still, we managed to um, uh, make it to the top 10 of the global medal ranking at all the Olympic Games for the last uh, well, decades. So that means that we have a high percentage of athletes that also uh, win gold or silver or bronze medals at, uh, at Olympics. Uh, you see some numbers uh, here in the sheet, uh, not just uh, sports-wise, uh, but also looking at investments or number of patents that um, uh, we apply for in the Netherlands. We're all in the top of the worldwide ranking. Um, I already mentioned that we are a small country, and that also means that we have to be very innovative, very creative to compete with the big uh, countries that have many more inhabitants, uh, many more people, 
many more resources. Uh, so we have to try to see to find a way that we are still uh, um, that can, that we can still compete with uh, with other big uh, big nations. Uh, and again, I think that's mainly uh, due to the innovativeness, and uh, that's also a bit the network that we present uh, represent as uh, as OSF, and that we try to uh, facilitate and uh, get in touch with uh, with the Chinese uh, counterparts as well. So a little bit more about uh, Orange Sports Forum. Uh, seen many new uh, new faces, so uh, not everyone uh, knows what we are doing. Uh, but we are a platform of 300 Dutch sports-related organizations, and that goes from architects and construction companies that design and build stadiums and venues, uh, but also a lot of startups that create mobile apps to stimulate people being more uh, physical active. Uh, so it's a very uh, broad, a very wide variety of, of companies and organizations. Um, but anyway, they all contribute to somehow to, uh, to sports, uh, not just professional sports, but also sports uh, for all. Um, the organization was established in uh, 2010, so 13 years ago. And uh, during the past 13 years, we organized a lot of trade missions, a lot of business visits, uh, business trips. We went to a lot of exhibitions worldwide to facilitate our network with international uh, business. Um, of course, we did that uh, to the United States, to the Middle East, within Europe, uh, but also to China. So I will give you a few examples about that as well. Um, we started together with the Dutch government a public-private partnership a couple of years ago. Uh, it was focused on, on China. Uh, Western China, to be more specific, and it was how can we, as the Netherlands, uh, support China with their ambitions in growing football, uh, the sports, uh, how can we learn uh, from China in terms of uh, football and um, stimulate the knowledge exchange between all the organizations. So we uh, participated in some exhibitions and conferences like uh, the Soccer X in uh, Zhuhai uh, and also the Soccer X in Hainan uh, a couple of years ago. We visited cities like uh, Hong Kong, uh, Shenzhen, uh, Chengdu, uh, Chongqing, uh, all with a big delegation of, uh, of sports companies, from uh, football club uh, Feyenoord, who is the current uh, national champion in the Netherlands, and also uh, sign a, a partnership with a local organization, to big construction companies like Oil Haskoning, who uh, were part of, this, uh, of these trade missions. So a few key facts about what we are doing today with the uh, Sino-Dutch uh, Sports Tech Hub. Uh, of course, it's historical. Um, there are not many organizations that represent a large cluster of sports-related companies uh, and even less organizations that work so closely together as, uh, as we do together with, uh, with Aqua Bloom and um, with establishing the Sino-Dutch uh, Sports Tech Hub. So um, yeah, it's already a very innovative uh, concept, I think. And, um, and we're really looking forward to see how we can uh, facilitate more organizations in the future and how we can work together to, uh, to create more impact in sports between both uh, nati nations. Uh, of course, we create a, a digital and intelligent uh, platform. Um, so we make use of uh, AI technology and, and other services, IT services, uh, to make it more easy for organizations to get in touch with each other and to get the right uh, uh, consultancy. And we will initiate uh, a lot of projects. So uh, projects in China, projects in, in Europe, so that we can really work together on um, yeah, R&D projects, but also projects for business development around the sports and uh, events and uh, sports uh, tech. So Ray mentioned already a little bit about uh, Cyberport. Uh, also the Sino Dutch Sports Tech Hub is located in, uh, in Cyberport. Uh, it was also part of the program uh, of the minister in um, in October 2023, where we visited the, uh, the Cyberport region, and also the Sino Dutch Sports Tech Hub has now a physical office in uh, in Cyberport in Hong Kong, and we are happy to facilitate uh, European organisations with making use of that office uh, as a flexible working space, uh, but also as a first landing space for uh, for Hong Kong and, uh, and mainland China. So a bit more about the services that we will um, uh, that we will provide. Of course, trade missions. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, the 
the visit of the minister in October was the first step towards a, a business trade mission, uh, which we will uh, organize in 2024. Uh, we don't have the final dates yet, but we try to combine it with a, a big event in, uh, in Hong Kong or in mainland China. Uh, and during that trade mission, we want to bring as many companies as possible to, uh, to China and um, yeah, bring them new relations and, uh, and business potential. Uh, we will organize several events. Uh, also, this uh, webinar is, uh, I think, the first step in uh, in many uh, in a series of many many webinars and uh, and events. Uh, also, matchmaking. So, introduce one on one uh, contacts. Uh, we will do the business landing. So, make it easier for Dutch companies or European companies to establish an office in uh, in China. Uh, how to deal with the culture, with the language, with the tax services, with legal services, etc. We have all that knowledge uh, within the Sino Dutch Sports Tech Hub and uh, and the partners uh, around it, and of course consulting, consulting. So from a market strategy and market research to uh, talent development, uh, find uh, employees and create a real knowledge center uh, on how to do business and uh, and work together with uh, with China. So a bit more about the Europe uh, lending program. Uh, which we are part of uh, ourselves as well, um, and which is, of course, also open to uh, a lot of European organizations. Uh, but it's very uh, efficient and um, uh, and which work, works very well is that you get a personal mentor from Cyberport. So he will help you through all the steps and the processes that you need to um, go through in uh, establishing a business. Of course, you get a business uh, or a visa. Uh, you can open an office uh, with business development. Uh, you have good access to uh, to a big network of uh, key stakeholders in uh, in sports, uh, to capital and funding. There are many funding programs in Cyberport for uh, for European organizations as well uh, that open an office in uh, in Cyberport. And you go come into a big network of R and D and and resources and. Um, uh, I think that's very useful for uh, European organizations that want to establish an office. Um, and of course, last but not least, uh, you get support in legal and financial uh, services. So uh, that's uh, it for me uh, right now. Uh, of course, if there are any questions, uh, we can do it uh, during the Q&A afterwards. But I think now it's good to give the floor also to some uh, companies and, and other organizations that... Uh, are in the program today. So uh, thank you very much and um, looking forward to the rest of the, the program of this webinar. Thank you, Rick. Thanks very much. Uh, so next, uh, we are very honored to have Professor Z to give us a, a kind of speech. Uh, Professor Z is the Director of Office of Research and Knowledge Transfer Services of the Chinese U University of Hong Kong. Uh, he is also professor and director of the uh, Center for Clinical Research and Biostatistics of the Jockey Club uh, School of uh, Public uh, Health and the pri Primary uh, Care, and also the director of the Clinical Trials and Biostatistics Lab in the CU Shenzhen Research uh, Institute. Uh, professor Z, uh, please. Thank you very much. Can I uh, yeah. share my? Let me know if, if we can share the screen. Screen, okay. Yeah, please let me check. Yeah, we can see the screen. Hi, thank you very much. So uh, I, I I'm going to present something of the um, uh, some background of my technology. My, uh, my own invention and how it is going to apply in uh, sports technology uh, area. Uh, so I have been working on this project for uh, around maybe 10, more than 10 years. Uh, this is a machine learning and deep learning approach using retinal image. Retina is uh, this part of the eye, at the back of the eye, that has a lot of vessels connected to the brain and hence to other circulating system in the body. So using that particular image which we can you know easily capture using a fundus camera in a day-to-day -day eyes uh, uh, examination uh, most ophthalmologists optometrists used to do this in uh, in many clinics 
to uh, take a picture and then they can put a, a, a record and so on. By using this photo, actually, if you explode it into a uh, hundred times or thousand times, you can see very detailed pixel by pixel information. And we can use this to look at the uh, eye disease diagnosis or cardiovascular uh, diseases or other uh, brain related things, which is quite close to the eyes. And we use this uh, information and created our own uh, diagnostic system. So this is the retina that you can, you can see, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, has a lot of information in vessel. The system looks like this and see whether you can hear the voice of this uh, recording. Aria and can you hear that? Simple step. First, take retinal images of both eyes using a non-hydratic fundus camera. No pupil dilation is required. It is a simple, fast, non-invasive method that doesn't require any blood draw or test. Then log on to the internet account and upload the images. The ARIA analysis will automatically start running in the cloud server. It doesn't require any human intervention. Analysis results are ready in just a few minutes, meaning analysis can be done anytime, anywhere, making it an ideal tool for telemedicine, especially for rural populations. Okay, so that's all it takes. It takes a few minutes to capture the images and then send to the cloud server and then do the analysis and the results sent back. So this is the basic uh, technology that supports all these indication. We already have finished stroke and dementia risk uh, and is on the market in Hong Kong. So it, this is a medical technology. And uh, all of these things like uh, chronic kidney disease, anemia, uh, eye disease like uh, diabetic retinopathy, coronary heart disease, uh, other stroke subtypes, and, and even di uh, risk of diabetes. All of these has been done, and there are more research going on uh, in, in Hong Kong. So how does that relate to the sports technology? Medical technology has been a very um, uh, steep path. We have a lot of regulatory and a protection on subjects and humans. And uh, we, 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 we do a lot of work on, on, uh, on the regulatory issues. Now, sports technology, on the other hand, is a very down-to-earth uh, things that apply to many uh, people, including professional uh, athletes, as well as many amateur athletics uh, uh, people who are interested in this area. So because of the vast information in the retina, uh, we we use this information and do a few things. First, first of all, we can use this information to find best talents for different types of sports. Uh, we already have done some work on the brain injury, especially due to aging or treatment like chemotherapy or radiotherapy that affect our brain. And we know that we can detect information on the brain using information in the retina without directly doing an MRI. And then we think we can actually use this to uh, tailor you know, a performance in, uh, uh, in competitive sports. So all of these things is being translated from medical technology into uh, sports technology. Uh, I would skip this detail, but just looking at the application. You know, for talent selection, this is a vast application for general population. Early detection of minor injuries due to concussion can be applied to uh, professional, uh, you know, contact sports players as well as you know high school players, especially in the U.S. They are very keen in terms of training in foot in American football. So injury is cannot be avoided. So who haven't actually been injured, uh, and especially the linebacker and other people that are in the, in, in playing these sports but we want to provide something that they can detect early minor injury so that they can deal with it as soon as possible before it becomes you know, a, a, a big problem. So to save you know, young people's uh, you know, health in terms of deterioration uh, quick, uh, too quickly into early dementia kids. And then a, a performance of individual as well as team sports can be used, uh, this technology to enhance it. So uh, in the first thing, selection of talents, uh, because we have done a lot of this medical related 
information. You can you can see stroke and cognitive health is, you know, you think it's physical, you know, entity, but actually depression and mental health risk, we already have done uh, a lot of work in Hong Kong when we know that in the retina, there are information that we can use to, you know, diagnose depression. And then this is ongoing project. So depression, emotion, and intelligent, cognitive function, all of these things can be done. And they are all related to performance in sports. Uh, this uh, for the second things that relate to, this is the uh, uh, one of the study that we have published a long time ago for stroke. We know that we can find a lot of characteristics in the retina uh, uh, to, you know, uh, to uh, deduce what happened in the brain. And we can, we, the, the, the accuracy is over 90% for stroke. Uh, this paper is on white matter hyperintensity. We use the MRI as a gold standard, and we can use the retina to estimate the white matter hyperintensity in the MRI. And the accuracy is 93% sensitivity and 98% specificity. And if you look at the correlation between brain MRI versus uh, on the y-axis, the retinal image analysis, which is can be done in two minutes, the brain MRI, of course, takes a lot of work. The correlation is 0 0.0.897, so it's very high correlation. So we believe that this can be done, you know, used in the, in the sports injury uh, application. And more important, more interesting is that another paper we published in Brain Communication, we have demonstrated that the retina, the retinal image can actually tell us where the white matter have intensity is located, uh, whether it's in the frontal loop, the retinal occipital loop, and so on. So by looking at the retina, we can even identify the injury in which part of the brain. Uh, you know, of course, this type of injury in this case, in this study, is due to aging. Uh, but if you have injury due to concussion, uh, theoretically, it's going to be the same. So with the research, of course, we have to do more research on this. And the third thing is performance. Prediction of performance based on sports-related functions including a lot of things like concentration, cognitive function, uh, power, speed, agility, and so on. So all of these things, we want to use retinal image to see whether we can yeah, detect it and then can be used in both individual sports and team sports. And, uh, and this information uh, probably, you know, I, I, I haven't done the study yet, so uh, I have, I'm guessing that will be very useful for the coach to identify weaknesses in a particular competition. And then that's the future expansions of this technology. And we want to continue to do uh, things on uh, as, uh, research on uh, selection of talents, injury, peak performance, recovery, and rehabilitation. And other, other, other thing we can co uh, collaborate with or, or integrate with uh, other uh, potential software, uh, biotech, uh, development, AI, material, wearables, computer vision, metaverse, and maybe Chinese medicine and other things that we can actually integrate. Uh, so our university are very keen on uh, engineering development, biomedical development, and so on. So we, uh, I hope in the future we can, uh, not just my technology, although my technology may be uh, 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 quite widely applicable in many aspects, but also in uh, collaborating with other uh, researchers and other technology uh, worldwide to improve uh, uh, the, the sports technology uh, content and, and, and depth. And uh, so this is the uh, cross-discipline uh, potential that we can actually do in terms of our development. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Z, uh, for this uh, sharing. And um, all the guests, if you have any questions, uh, you can just put a question in the chat box. I will try to answer the questions uh, in the Q and A session. Um, next, uh, we are uh, very pleased to have uh, Mr. Flavio uh, uh, Rachela, uh, the product uh, product owner from Philips, to give us uh, a keynote speech. Uh, Mr. Richella builds innovative solutions uh, for health challenges, and uh, uh, he has extensive ex experience in the development and validation of cutting edge technologies to assist physiological uh, characteristics and guide treatment 
So therefore, he's also involved in the uh, European uh, projects in Alpha House and RM4 House. Mr. Rochelle, please. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I will share my screen. Yeah, let me know if it's working. Yes, I believe it's working. Yeah, it's working. Yes, great. Perfect. Okay. Um, well, uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, so my name is Flavio Raskela. I'm uh, the project leader for RM4 Health. Um, and I'm very happy to give you a very brief introduction to the project. Uh, um, so RM4 Health is an European project that focuses on uh, remote monitoring for health and sport. Uh, let's start with a brief uh, overview. So this is a three years project. We started in 2023. So now we are almost uh, at the end of the first year for the project. Um, the project revolves around four aims. Uh, we look into uh, uh, wearables and metrics, remote monitoring platforms, AI and digital twins, and finally care and training programs. Regarding wearables and metrics, um, our aim is needed to generate innovative algorithms that helps to transform uh, physiological measurement into actionable insights. And for this, we are trying to use either existing solutions uh, uh, from many of our partners, or we want to develop new solutions. Uh, regarding remote monitoring platforms, uh, we are aiming to generate an architectural standards that uh, can, can allow continuous uh, collection of uh, uh, data from different wearables uh, and at the same time also seamless integration with different applications or different dashboards for AI digital twins uh, we want to generate data driven models that can uh, track the um, physiological status or performance of athletes and patients with the idea to take into account some context specific parameters and finally for care and training programs uh, our aim is to develop an uh, um, application uh, that can help visualize uh, the, the trends or insights regarding either patients or, or athletes so that we can support subject matter experts, for, that, for example, healthcare professionals or even coaches to take uh, some decisions. Um, to, to reach those aims, uh, we design clinical investigations and studies uh, which actually target the collection of data, but at the same time also to get consensus from those subject matter experts. So this is a very brief overview uh, of our project. Regarding our consortium, uh, this is partners uh, from four different countries. We are looking at Finland, the Netherlands, Spain and Portugal. And the consortium is built of a long relationship between uh, um, companies, hospitals, but at the same time also universities. And here you can see the different names from the old companies involved in, in, the, in the project. So uh, RM4 Health evolves over six use cases, uh, four of which are linked to health and two of which are linked to sport applications. Uh, regarding the health, uh, applications, what we're trying to do is, uh, uh, regarding the first one, is looking into perioperative care uh, for surgery patients uh, suffering from heart failure. So we want to monitor the state of those patients before and after surgery. Then we're looking into detection of respiratory disorders uh, look, uh, through digital stethoscope signals. Uh, then we have an early detection of heart failure decompensation in post-surgery patients. And finally, we are also looking into a remote monitoring of early depopulation in their daily activities that goes from uh, taking the, the medicines that have been assigned by the doctors to making sure that they are healthy and, uh, and they're safe. For sport application, instead we're looking into monitoring of exercises so that we can assess the performance of, uh, of the athletes and the fitness level or the, the, to create the rehabilitation program for them. But not only looking into the current state, but also forecasting what is the physical state and performance given the current status. So all those projects, if this is a very high overview, eh, but if we can look at them, there are some common denominators. And for each one of those, we're looking into remote monitoring uh, using wearable sensors 
there can be events, there can be watches, there can be cameras. Um, but at the same time, we want to do a continuous monitoring of vital signs, performance, or even an early detection of undesired condition. Uh, we can think about deterioration of a specific patient uh, before surgery or after surgery. We can think about uh, a potential injury that may arise before a very relevant training or a very relevant challenge for an athlete or a match. And finally, we are always looking to sensitive population that can be with patients or athletes. This is a very high level of view once more. But what I would like to do now is to really look into the details. Huh? And, and uh, I would take as an example two use cases, one for health and one for sport. So let's deep dive. Um, regarding the, actually, let me just uh, give you an, first this information. I will look into the first use case for remote monitoring for perioperative care. And then I will look into the number five, which is the exercise monitoring. So regarding the first one, what is the objective here? Uh, we want to understand whether there is added value in using non-invasive sensor to predict heart failure deterioration in patients before and after surgery. And those are patients which have the compensated heart. So this is indeed the target population that we're looking into. And as we want to show added value, we want our protocol uh, consists of a daily measurement for a period of three months where we are actually comparing data that is conventionally recorded during clinical practice to data that, that comes from a wrist-worn device. And in this case, if you look at the brief schematic of this use case for, for what will be the clinical investigation that we will run, we have a patient who actually is interfacing with the remote monitoring program uh, or platform which is a wearable, in this case, a watch, uh, who is, what is, they, with, which is connected to a gateway. And the gateway will stream all the information directly to a cloud platform. This cloud platform is accessible from healthcare professionals. And it, within the cloud platform, we also have an analytic engine that can uh, run algorithms and indeed transform what we call physiological measurement into actionable insights that can help the uh, healthcare professional in decision making. Regarding the second use case, uh, this is the sport use case. Uh, what we want to do here is to have an accurate estimation of the physiological state of athletes, both during a specific exercise session, but also outside of the pitch, for example. And the goal is to personalize uh, the, the, the program for each one of them so that we can uh, understand whether they were doing training or we're doing a specific recovery or rehabilitation uh, program. For this use case, the population that we're targeting is professional football players. And for protocol, where well, we are collecting daily physical parameters uh, that go into vital signs, again, from wearable sensor, or at the same time, uh, video recording for performance assessment uh, using VR or uh, AR environments. Um, if you look at the brief schematic once more, we have an athlete who is interfacing with remote monitoring sensors. In this case, we have sensor from Polar, we have uh, um, Team Pro sensors used in collaboration with sensor from EMFIT, which is another uh, indeed company in Finland. And this, they can help to measure vital signs during training and outside of training. All this data is streamed into the cloud platform, which enable uh, AR or VR capabilities. And then there is a coach that can directly connect uh, to this cloud platform and then monitor the states of the athletes, both during training or even outside of the training. So to see what is their sleep condition, whether they're recovering enough, whether they're ready for the next endeavors. Well, with this, I close my brief introduction to rm 4 Health. Uh, I thank you for your attention and I'm uh, keen to address all possible questions uh, in the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rashona, for your fantastic sharing. Uh, you can stop the... Yeah. Uh, thank you very much.
So um, before the Q&A session, uh, we, we also would like to quickly uh, introduce an event we are supporting uh, from uh, 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 22nd, 23rd February uh, next year. Uh, sporting uh, Sportel will well, uh, Sportel uh, will be back to for the second consecutive year in Indonesia Bali Island, uh, which is the international sports uh, market and conference uh, summit uh, with a focus on APEC. Uh, is bringing uh, together uh, the sports business advanced community uh, from the Asian Pacific region and beyond. Uh, so it is a unique event where you can learn and exchange about the market. And the new technologies and the actual interest of the content owners uh, distributed in China. So um, uh, we are the uh, strategic partner uh, of uh, Sportel. So uh, contact us uh, if you are interested to uh, participate and also to enjoy the special rate. So next, uh, we will have a few minutes for the Q&A session. Thanks um, again to uh, Professor Z and also Dr. Roshina for your uh, very nice and in detailed uh, introductions um, and uh, the uh, presentations of the R&D projects. So uh, um, all the guests, uh, please free, uh, feel free to ask uh, if you have any questions or you can just put uh, you know, your questions in the, in the chat box. I think it's it's important also to mention that uh, I don't know if there are a lot of questions, but uh, is, is the webinar registered that we can send, uh, let's say, all the presentations also afterwards to the participants in this webinar? I think that uh, that will also elaborate a little bit on, on more questions, detailed questions, uh, the presentations from Dr. Z and from, uh, from, from Flavio. Yeah, yeah, good point. I mean, uh, if you have uh, any questions, you can erase the, you know, uh, questions in the chat box right now, or if you don't, uh, we can simply, you know, have a sort of like a recap emails to you guys with the uh, the presentations, and you can, you know, uh, uh, contact us via emails if you having any further uh, interest or you know questions uh, to the guests and also the presentations. I see at least that there is one or two questions uh, from uh, Una Uana Orza, I believe. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I guess they are just showing, you know, of course, they're showing very great interest and also the appreciation uh, for the shared uh, sharing uh, presentations from uh, Professor Z and uh, uh, Dr. Washena, uh, you know, of, of their projects. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, you can ask now or um, we can just end this webinar. I mean, uh, you can... Um, contact us by uh, emails and uh, we can continue to uh, communicate. Um, I think we have a question from John uh, to uh, Professor Z. Oh, in, in, regarding the camera, uh, uh, we, we only use the most fundamental fundus camera, which is being used by most of the optometrists and ophthalmologists worldwide. Uh, the, the, in the ophthalmology world, people are already moving towards OCT and other more sophisticated uh, retinal imaging technique, uh, uh, but the the development of our uh, uh, software, uh, basically using the most simple fundus camera technology. The reason that I used uh, I do that is because we can actually do a lot of works on those simple photographs, and we want to make the hardware cost as low as possible. So that we can, you know, originally this is a project on public health. We want to we want to benefit the uh, the most rural area uh, of the of the world, uh, not just China. But we want to we want to provide this technology to help um, uh, even uh, very rural, very backward countries, and as well as the wealthy countries. Uh, but uh, in terms of the things that we can do on the software size, is you know, uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, even uh, OCT parameters, we can we have we just found a, a a new pattern to to estimate OCT parameters using fundus camera images. So the tech, you know, the mathematics this you know in the last 10, 20 years has been dramatically improved. So uh, it uh, is it it provides us with a lot of room to work on 
uh, the 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 uh, very simple uh, retinal images. So uh, uh, so that's what 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 we're trying to do. We don't want this to become a very expensive uh, technology that can only be used in the hospital. Uh, we want to use this in anywhere, okay, in in the school, in high school. Uh, in, in in so that the, the team, the football team, can actually do this every day, and uh, once they know that they have problems uh, early on, uh, they can deal with it. Take a rest, do something, do rehabilitation, and don't injure yourself and 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 becoming you know uh, you shorten your career, uh, both your sports career, athletic, athletics career as well as your real career. <laughs> And uh, not 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 saying that ca athletics cannot be a career, but then some uh, uh, you know we only have very small number of stars, but we have, have a lot of players in the high school who wants to play you know football, but do not get to that level, and we still want them to have a life. Uh, so that's an important objective that we want to do uh, in our technology. So that's why we 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 insist in exploring methodology that can use the most you know, uh, less expensive hardware, you know, to achieve uh, this objective. But lo long answer to a short question, but once, because they're asking the hardware issues, but that's the that's the intention of why we choose uh, uh, the, the funders camera uh, for, for this uh, uh, development. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Professor Z. Um, do we have any other questions from the from, from all the guests. Um, or is there any uh, information from uh, OSF you wanted to add to the end of this webinar? No, I thank you all uh, for attending. It was, was a very uh, interesting. Perhaps uh, some last words from your side, Rick, you were involved in the organization. Uh, I think we had uh, about 30 uh, participants. So I think a lot of interest uh, for this uh, kind of cooperation and webinars. So I think we will continue also with uh, this series, uh, Rick. Yeah, yeah. this is just the first uh, webinar in a series of, uh, of webinars. So uh, we're happy to follow up on this and uh, also see the uh, a lot of interest from uh, both um, uh, Asian and uh, European side. Uh, and please note that we will organize a trade mission later on uh, this year. So we can uh, yeah, also make the next steps in uh, facilitating all the organizations. Uh, we will keep you up to date about it. And if you have any questions, ideas uh, towards the trade mission, feel free to uh, to contact us. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, feel free to reach out to me, Camille, or Ray. Um, and if you don't have the contact details, we will share it in the email uh, afterwards. Okay, great. Thanks. And so I think uh, that will be the end of uh, the webinar today. And this is a great start of the series of uh, webinars in the, in the future. And uh, thanks again to this uh, great support from Professor Z and uh, Dr. Rashina for your very great uh, uh, sharing, uh, you know, great insights uh, brought uh, to the to the guests, and also great support from the uh, uh, team. And thank you very much all for your uh, participation uh, for all the guests. Um, like uh, uh, Camille and Rick said, we will have a sort of wrap-up email or follow-up emails uh, with some insights and, and presentations or some contact information. If you have any um, interest to uh, contact or communication, uh, you can reply to us by emails. So uh, thank you again. Thank you very much to everyone and uh, have, uh, have a nice day and also uh, uh, a great uh, 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 weekend uh, to be expected.